Guys, if you ever want to have a really good laugh, I really recommend you to go and check out the video that I did exactly one year ago where I was predicting what I thought was going to happen during 2020. It is a prime example on why you should never ever make predictions about the aviation industry. But just for fun, I will link to it up here. Now, 2020 has been riddled with bad news, and I fully understand if you don't want to hear anything more about it. And if that's the case, then I will show you the timestamp down here, which you can skip to in order to hear the positive news that I will be delivering in this video. And if you want to see some really, really positive news, then I highly recommend you to stay to the very end of this video. So, you cannot speak about 2020 without talking about the horrible COVID-19 pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic has turned the world completely upside down. And it is actually exactly one year ago today that we started hearing the first news about something strange happening in China and in the Wuhan region. Now, over the next couple of weeks, in the beginning of 2020, we started understanding that this is something out of the ordinary. And during the end of January, in the beginning of February, the world as we knew it came to a virtual stop. When it comes to the aviation industry, that had some absolutely profound effect. Um, first, the countries started completely shutting down. And there was no flights except for cargo flights, and not even cargo flights in the beginning. Eventually, these national lockdowns, after months of lockdowns, started turning into this kind of patchwork of national restrictions where you could travel to some countries, uh, you couldn't travel to others, and if you flew to a third country, then you might be in quarantine. And this patchwork of different rules and regulations made it literally impossible for most people to, to travel, to know what was going to happen to them, and the effect that had was in some cases, more than a 90% drop of passenger volumes on both international and also domestic flights. Now, when in the worst kind of nightmares and the prediction, the worst, most negative predictions that we could have ever made, we wouldn't have come up with a scenario like this. A lot of airlines have had to shrink. They've had to go into a type of hibernation um, situation which has led to a lot of my colleagues being furloughed. Tens of thousands of my colleagues, both cabin crew, engineers, pilots, and everyone in the supply chain have lost their jobs. And actually, it has turned me into a full-time YouTuber, which is something that I never thought I would say. But I still consider myself extremely lucky because I still have my employment. And I am looking forward to the, my airline starting to pick up as the passenger traffic start returning in 2021. But I want to take this opportunity, guys, to send a huge thank you to my Patreon crew. You guys know who you are, and it's because of you that I have been able to sit down and focus on creating new content and informing everyone out there through my YouTube channel, rather than going out, as a lot of my colleagues have had to do, and maybe drive food delivery trucks instead. So. If you are a patron out there, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. It is so appreciated both by me and my own family, and it is enabling me to continue to do this kind of content. Another effect that this huge downturn has had during 2020 is that some of our most beloved aircraft types are starting to be removed out of passenger traffic. So the Queen of the Skies, the Boeing 747, is one of these aircraft. Um, it is very few passenger airlines that are still operating it. Most of them have planned to remove it now. Now that would have happened anyway, but this pandemic has definitely quickened up the disappearance. But the good news is that we will probably continue to see the Boeing 747 in the foreseeable future in their role as a cargo aircraft. But the same thing is happening to, for example, the Airbus A380 that's had a very, you know, in the scheme of things, short career. It's also now disappearing. The Airbus A340 
is also disappearing. And basically all of the major four engine aircrafts are, you know, for economical reasons, deemed not, not as effective as their two engine counterparts. The flight training industry has also been very severely affected during 2020. We saw some really horrible examples of MPL students that suddenly found themselves without an airline that they were supposed to do their training in. But also schools have been struggling with lockdowns and natural restrictions which have made it very hard for them to continue their training. Now, we saw also in the beginning, of course, uh, a very understandable reluctance for new students to get into the industry. But I am guessing that as we are now starting to see some more positive signs, that it's likely that the training industry is going to start picking up during 2021 as well. Now, I want to take a few minutes here as well to recognize that 2020 was not only about the pandemic. There were some other tragedies that happened during 2020 as well, um, starting with the very tragic downing of a Ukrainian Airlines flight that was shot down by Iranian military in the beginning of the year. And then we had the Pakistan International Airlines flight 8303 that uh, did a belly landing, subsequent go around and then crashed during the um, subsequent attempt to land. That was followed by a huge licensing scandal where um, quite a few pilots lost their license in Pakistan International Airlines after it was found out that they hadn't been doing their proper exams or they hadn't been licensed properly. That seems to have been resolved now. And at the very end of 2020, we lost one of the aviation world's biggest legends. General Chuck Yeager died at the age of 97 after having served aviation and his country for his entire life. And we do remember and will always remember him and what he did for aviation very fondly. But like I said, now it is time to start looking forward. And if there's one thing that we should learn from the aviation industry, it's that aviation industry is used to taking very tragic events, examining them and learn from them in order to make them into something positive, something that we can build on for the future, that we can learn on to make the future better and more safe. So how can we do that about 2020 then? Well, the first thing that we can look at is how important aviation freight is for the world economy. This is something that's been very, very clearly highlighted as the aviation freight has absolutely skyrocketed during this year. Aviation freight prices have gone up. They went up because we noticed something that we maybe haven't thought about before, which is that a lot of freight is actually being carried in the belly of passenger airlines. So it is likely that while we're going forward now, the airlines would be able to utilize that more, have even a bigger revenue stream. And I foresee that the freight companies out there will just go stronger and bigger during 2021. Both now as they are being used as a crucial part to deliver the vaccines all over the world, but also because the world economy is changing into a more digital economy and that, that was already happening, but the pandemic has really moved that forward. So we can see companies like Amazon, for example, growing hugely every single day. They are going to need to deliver their goods all over the world. And one of the many ways to do that is through aviation freight. So aviation freight is likely going to be stronger and better, more efficient as we go forward into 2021. The next thing that we should learn from 2020 is how important it is for the airlines to keep a good economy. At the moment, a lot of airlines are actually only existing because their individual countries are there funding them, sending money into them. If that weren't the case, we would have seen a lot more bankruptcies during 2020. But we can also see that some airlines have been doing reasonably well during this crisis. And that has been largely down to their cost structure, their ability to quickly change and minimize their costs and kind of go into a type of hibernation. And also the incredible value of owning their own aircraft fleets. 
because if you are stuck with a large fleet that you are leasing and you have to pay your leasing fees every single month well then you you know there's only so much that you can do to lower your cost but if you as an airline own your aircraft outright well then putting them down into hibernation and actually letting them sit on the ground it's still going to cost money but not not at all as much only a fraction of that cost so i think that the airlines will have learned from 2020 that if you are doing well and you're making money and the economy is going well well then you should probably focus on using some of that earnings to reinvest into your own aircraft fleet to make sure that you can keep your cost base as low as possible so that the day you come into a downturn like this or hopefully never again like this but a general downturn that you can keep that low cost base and instead of paying huge dividends to your shareholders you'll be able to kind of keep your company going keeping your people employed throughout the crisis and because of that being able to pounce and to grab market share when you see that the economy is turning back up again that I think is going to be a major lesson for the airlines out there after this pandemic but 2020 has also been the year where the environmental impact of aviation has really started to come on to the forefront on the tables of the aircraft manufacturers. We've seen some really great initiatives from aircraft manufacturer Airbus, for example, who uh, in 2020 revealed that they were working on a prototype of a hydrogen-driven airliner, something that could actually be used to fly long haul, which is not something that we've seen up until this point. But we're also seeing a, a barrage of upstart, upstarts like, for example, Hart Aerospace in Gothenburg, who's working on a 19-seater battery-driven short-haul airliner. And in 2021, I promise you guys that I will be going out as soon as I can start traveling again. And we're going to look into these technologies to see how viable they are. And if we are actually going to sit in a battery driven or in a hydrogen driven aircraft within the next 10 years. Now, towards the very end of the year, we also saw the very much anticipated ungrounding of the Boeing 737 MAX. Now, though this is hugely positive news going forward. For Boeing, it's very important because they will need to start up the production of the 737 MAX now and that will trickle down through their supply chain and will lead to thousands of jobs. And for the airlines, it means that they will now have access to these much, much more efficient aircraft that is going to help them to keep their cost down and start driving their revenue up to start to kind of get back from this crisis year of 2020. So I predict that the 737 MAX will be one of the biggest workhorses for the short medium haul market going forward from here. And it is good for the airlines, it is good for Boeing, it's good for the economy. And I am personally looking forward to fly the aircraft myself. And finally, maybe one of the most positive things to bring with us from 2020 is the knowledge that people still want to travel. People still want to experience new things. They want to go to new places. They want to fill their lungs with air that they haven't been breathing before. And we know that now because as soon as the vaccines started to become approved and the people started realizing that there is a light at the end of this tunnel, we saw bookings for the summer of 2021 triple. Lufthansa was reporting this. Many other airlines have been reporting similar numbers. And it just goes to show that even though we've been sitting at home now for a year, we haven't gotten used to that. And it's not something we want to do. If you think about it yourself, and I go back to myself, the first thing that I want to do as soon as these restrictions are lifted and I can go travel in a safe and comfortable way again, that's what I will do. I'm gonna go back to my family in Sweden. I am going to go out doing reports for you guys. I'm gonna visit new countries and I wanna take my family on vacation. And I don't think that I am alone in feeling that. I think that pretty much anyone who's watching this and pretty much anyone out there feels exactly the same. So I think that with that in mind, as the vaccines are now going out, if we all you know, do our part and take the vaccines and stay safe and get this thing under control, then in 2021, we are going to start to see some really positive news. And the thing with positive news, guys, is that positive news 
brings more positive news. As we start to feel that we have confidence coming back to us again, we will start to use that, to move forward, to take more bold steps. We are going to start building again. We're going to start to create. So during 2021, I foresee not a boom, but I foresee a steady walk towards a recovery in the airline business, a recovery in, you know, in many, many different areas, in many different industries as well. And that's the feeling that I want to bring you guys as you're leaving this video. But Remember, there's one last thing that I wanted to show you. You would have all noticed that I don't have my dogs with me anymore. And what's up with that? I know a lot of you guys are missing the dogs. That The dogs will be coming back. But the reason that Molly is not here, for example, is that two days ago on the 29th of December, she gave birth to five beautiful little puppies. Three females, two males, and both the mom and the puppies are doing great at the moment. And I cannot wait to show it to you. And on that, which I think is probably the most positive way to end up 2020, I want to wish all of you guys a happy new year. Okay, I am going to do my best to create more great content for you. I am looking forward to hear from you what you would like to see, but I'm going to come with some surprises that you did not expect as well. So keep following the channel in 2021. I hope that you've subscribed, that you have highlighted the notification bell. And if you want to continue to support the job that I do, consider joining my Patreon crew. There are links in the description of the video here, which you can use to, to join up. And any support is greatly appreciated. I also want to send a huge thank you to all of the sponsors that have been sponsoring the channel during 2020. I hope to keep all of you during 2021 as I'm aiming to grow this channel to new heights. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Happy New Year again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.